In this lecture, I will show you where the Gibbs free energy equation comes from. But before we talk about that, we must talk about a few important things. Firstly, whenever we talk about Gibbs free energy, we talk about closed systems, or reactions occurring under closed systems. So what is a closed system? A closed system simply means that no mass is exchanged, only energy is exchanged. And since mass is matter, and matter are molecules, that means no molecules go into the system, and no molecules leave the system. So the number of moles remains constant. Secondly, reactions are under constant temperature and pressure. If this wasn't true, the equation would break down. It would not work. So according to the ideal gas law, when number of moles is held constant, temperature is held constant, and pressure is held constant, then volume must remain constant. If volume is constant, then change in volume is zero, because V final and V initial are the same. So the PV work done is zero. And that means that we could approximate change in enthalpy as simply change in enthalpy of the system is equal to change in internal energy, or simply change in energy. The PV, uh, the PV term disappears because it's zero. Now thirdly, reactions are reversible, which means that if this wasn't true, the equation would break down as well. Now since reactions are reversible and enthalpy is a state function, Hess's law tells us the change in enthalpy of the forward reaction is equal to the negative change in enthalpy of the reverse reaction. So if we look at this reversible reaction here, A plus B is equal to C plus D, where the change in enthalpy is negative 10, and the reverse reaction, according to Hess's law, is C plus D equal A plus B, and this is negative of this, so it's positive 10 kilojoules per mole. The last thing we should mention is the mathematical formula for entropy, which basically states that change in entropy is the heat or change in energy over, over uh, temperature. And temperature is in Kelvin. Step 1. In step 1, I apply the formula for change in entropy. That is, change in entropy of the surroundings is equal to change in energy over temperature, as seen here. Step 2. Remember, when we talk about free energy or Gibbs free energy, we talk about a closed system, constant pressure, and constant temperature. And what this basically means, according to the ideal gas law, is that volume is constant, so change in volume is zero, so the PV work done is zero. So when we look at the equation for change in enthalpy, the PV work term disappears. And that means that our equation becomes change in enthalpy in the surroundings is equal to change in energy or heat. So this becomes this. Now, step three. Remember, when we talk about Gibbs free energy, we talk about a reversible reaction. And because enthalpy is a state function, according to Hess's law, Hess's law states that the enthalpy change of the forward reaction is equal to the negative enthalpy change of the reverse reaction. So the amount of energy that leaves the system is the same amount of energy except negative that entered the system. Okay, so the magnitude remains the same, but the signs change. Therefore, the change in enthalpy of the surroundings is equal to negative change in enthalpy of the system. Step four, remember, change in entropy of the universe is equal to change in entropy of the surroundings plus change in entropy of the system. Now, this guy equals this guy. Our next step will be to see that this guy can be replaced by this guy, okay? And that's exactly what we do in step five. We simply take this and plug it into here, and that's what we get here. The next step, we multiply out by negative t, and that's because we want to get rid of this t, okay? So let's do that. Negative t times this gives you this. Negative t times this gives you that. Negative t times a negative whatever gives us a positive. 
So plus this whole term. St step seven is basically the t's cancel out. So we get this whole thing minus these t's. Next step, what I do is I switch these guys to make it look more like the actual equation. And now I equate this to change in Gibbs energy. And now I get our final equation. Change in Gibbs free energy is equal to change in enthalpy of the system minus temperature times change in entropy of the system. The point was to change surroundings to system so that all the terms in the final equation are of the system. And I basically equated negative T times change in entropy of the universe with negative, or I'm sorry, with change in Gibbs free energy. And that's how you get Gibbs free energy equation.